Hi, welcome to Catholic Breakfast. Just having a ball, spending some time with St. Augustine's Confessions, this is his master work and um, his autobiography. Well, today I want to take a look at the role that memory plays, especially in our relationship with God. So here we are in book 10 of Augustine's Confessions, and it's it's when the book really shifts. So in these 13 books in, in Augustine's Confessions, the first nine are the autobiography. He tells the story of his life, and he goes into some tangents, but it's still basically the story of his uh, conversion. But then in, from 10 up to the rest of the book, it, it shifts, and he's going to talk about these um, more abstract, conceptual things. The, the reason for that is basically this. So uh, the, the story of like how one man comes to God is a kind of microcosm of how all things come to God. So Augustine isn't just telling you the story of his life for kicks or because it's like, here's my idiosyncratic life. He wants you to see that there's a pattern in what he's experienced. And that pattern now can be applied uh, in different ways. In chapter 10, it's all about the memory. And it's a very long chapter. And Augustine does some amazing, amazing sort of genius moves in this. And there's so much you could say about it. But what I want to talk about is kind of the basic point of what role the memory plays in our relationship with God. So here's how Augustine starts the chapter in his prayer to God. Let me know thee who knowest me. Let me know thee even as I am known. Knowledge of God always leads to deeper knowledge of ourselves. We know ourselves in God as created by God, as created for God, as held in existence right now. And then I come to know now who I am in God. This is all about the memory though. So you may say, well, Augustine, why do you need to talk so much about the memory? Because your memory, to some degree, is who you are. Time is a fleeting thing, right? You try to grab a moment, oh, just went into the past. Well, then, to have any sense of who I am requires some knowledge of me in time. But then, since time is always fleeting, I always know myself, to some degree, in the past. Anybody who's ever had a family member or a loved one get serious Alzheimer's knows this very well. You are, in a certain way, coextensive with your memory. You sort of are your memory. Here's why this is a problem for us today. I think in the culture in which we live, we very much are fed a pretty steady diet of you are whoever you want to be. You just create yourself in the present moment, self-invention. I am who I am right now, like from a, a blank slate. I don't want to be held back by anything in the past. There's a certain truth in that, right? Because I, I can govern myself to some degree. I can set the trajectory of my life. But to have any concept of who you are is just presupposes who you are in your memory. What's Augustine been doing for the last nine chapters? But he's been, he's been courageously going back to his whole life to when he was a little kid to when he was a teenager. And he's thinking through these things now in the light of his relationship with God. I think sometimes we can think, you know, gosh, like I want to spend time thinking about the things I did when I was a teenager, the bad things I did. I don't, I don't, or maybe I was hurt when I was a kid. And I, I don't want to think about those things now because it's too painful. And I can't integrate those into my life. I think sometimes I think Augustine would say, well, I understand that, but good luck with, with having an integrated life. Because you are one person. You are one person existing in time. And your memory is the faculty by which you are who you are. Here's a way that Augustine describes what your memory is. He describes it as a cavern or as a sanctuary, as a cloister. That's really cool, isn't it? Because your memory isn't something that you just build on your own. Like, I'll just, I'll just remember what I want to remember. It's not so simple. It's like a, a cloister or a sanctuary. Your memory is like a, a holy place where God dwells. Think about how weird it is, and Augustine plays with a lot of these little things, how weird it is when you remember something you don't want to remember, or you, you work hard to remember something, or you remember something wrongly, or all the ways that you don't control your memory. It's almost analogous to like a, a beautiful cathedral that you move into, and maybe you were involved in building parts of it, but it's just there. Someone else built it. So our soul is made in the image of God, and so your memory is kind of like in the image of, of, of God the Father, this, this, this kind of dark, unlimited abyss that is the source of everything else that comes from you. Think of maybe like, maybe unintegrated memories or repressed memories or, or, or whatever, right? They're sort of buried deep in your, in your unconscious. Well, you don't have control over those. Well, then who does? That's an important question. Um, and then what role do those memories play in forming who you are? 
So for Augustine, the answer to those questions is, is something like God is in control of those, but we're free. And so doing the work of moving into those memories and bringing those memories to, to light is scary stuff. But ultimately, it's meant to become, our, our memory is meant to become a place where we live and where we watch, worship God in my memories. That's what Augustine's been doing for nine chapters, where he can go back into his memories and even things that used to be so bitter and so disappointing and so painful are now reasons for him to praise God. I remember um, on my, some of the retreats I go on, my spiritual director says, hey, I want you to spend the f- your morning just remembering your childhood. And the implication is that I'm, I'm remembering it with God. And I'm sort of letting God tell me the story of my life. And it's, I got to tell you, sometimes I remember things that I, I forgot. I didn't even know that I remembered. It's very mysterious stuff. What is prayer without the memory? So much of prayer is simply letting your memory, maybe it's from the day, maybe it's from the week, maybe it's from five minutes, but letting those things emerge into the light of your relationship with God. Can that be very scary? You betcha it can be scary. But it's a deep act of faith. And in a certain sense, you might say, okay, but if you don't do that, what else are you going to do? Just, just be a blank slate in the present moment? Well, then where's your identity there? I mean, who are you? Are you just going to like live in the future? Well, the future doesn't exist, so you're just living in some unreal fantasy. Maybe I'll just make a challenge out of this, this, uh, this very long chapter. And I think the challenge is something like this. You know, take time, maybe with a journal, just maybe with some paper, to, to go through significant moments in your life, things that maybe you are afraid of remembering, maybe things that you are afraid of forgetting, and do a little prayer. God, help me remember these things. Help me remember them the way you remember them. Help me remember myself the way you remember me. And I think, I think you'll find what happens is far from becoming like a place where like your memory is not meant to be a, a dungeon where dragons exist and they're going to eat you. Faith allows Augustine to go back to those places and really conquer those dragons and those, those, those uh, serpents. And then his soul becomes not a dungeon, but a, a sanctuary, a cloister, like this beautiful cathedral where, he, where God is present in his own soul, in his own memories, and his memories become a a place where he can praise God and thank God and live with God.